Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Friday, December 20th, 2019 to you all. The final standard expiration of 2019. Of course, we still have another Friday expiration and a Monday and a Wednesday expiration to go before 2019 is officially ended. But this is our last standard expiration of the year. Time flies when you're having fun and hopefully making profits. Well, some things first, a little different change from our normal presentation. Um, I do owe you all some webinars, of course. Uh, didn't get a chance to post the uh, archived presentations, the archived discussions, excuse me, that we had from last week on the 13th. I will get those to you tomorrow. They'll be available on YouTube and on Power Options, and hopefully a special treat uh, for the holidays, for the season's greetings. We'll have that for you Saturday or Sunday as well. Of course, get this out of the way first. Special uh, reminder of the end of your special for the blueprint, the radioactive trading techniques, the full course there. Uh, just go to radioactivetrading.com slash EOY before December 31st. And you'll be able to lock in those eight special bonuses that we're offering this year. Last but not least, upcoming webinars with our truncated schedule next week. I'm not going to host a webinar on Tuesday simply because, well, it's a half day. Most of us are probably already making plans, have plans, or are going to be in a rush to finish up wrapping presents and other things before the 25th. Uh, but on the 26th, the day after Christmas, we will have a presentation at 12 noon. And, of course, we'll be back Friday the 27th at 4.30 for our special final Friday presentation of the year time to take out the trash and that's actually a poor phrase because we're not really taking out the trash so to speak what we're going to do is have an extended open forum uh, we're going to spend oh that didn't save oh well we're going to spend some time reviewing our top discussions from 2019 on our Friday sessions and other presentations and then of course we'll get back to your live questions well that's enough for the brief review right now let's just talk about why we're here today for our open forum for those of you that are new to our presentation, here's what we do on Fridays. When you logged on to the webinar, that GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar platform would have appeared on your screen. Inside that platform is a question pod. Just use that pod to send me a question at any time during the presentation. Uh, we'll make sure we'll handle all of the questions that come in. Your questions can be about anything related to options or options investing. If you have questions about a general option strategy, the structure of a covered call, naked put, diagonal spread, or anything along those lines, I think that's where we're going to actually start today, um, feel free to send them in. You may have questions about trade management, rolling or adjusting certain strategies or positions, when to roll the positions, trigger points, and more. That's all fair game. If you're just getting started and you have questions about option specifics, what is gamma, what is theta, what is vega, what could I, uh, should I consider or uh, might expect for a, um, you know, implied volatility move or adjustment if the stock moves X or Y, or even if you have questions about the basics, what is in the money, what is out of the money, what is delta and more, that's all fair game. Of course, some of you might, questions, uh, might have questions about the tools and power options or the concepts of the limited risk radioactive trading techniques as well. Basic ground rules, don't be shy. Please feel free to ask any questions that you want at any time during our presentation. Uh, be patient. There might be one or two questions ahead of yours, but as I mentioned, we will get through them all. We're scheduled to be here from 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, but if we have a high volume of questions, I'll be more than happy to stay online to make sure all questions are handled. As always, we encourage you to feel free to help us help others. The question comes in and I give a response based on my market experience, what I've done in my personal account, but you have a different way of analyzing a position, a criteria you like to use for a specific strategy, a structure that's worked well for you in different market conditions. We'll use the question pod and send that to us. We'll share it with the rest of the audience. I learn from you all every week, just as hopefully you all learn something from me. I may ask you for clarification on your questions. There's a lot of names, a lot of marketing names for strategies that are out there. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Uh, most important, let's have fun. Sit back, think about our other 51, uh, well, 50 really weeks that have passed so far and our other 11 standard expirations that have passed here. Get our mindset to what we're looking forward to today and what we're looking forward to in 2020 and have a great time. 
All right. Well, uh, Sam has uh, joined us here. Uh, Sam's a regular, of course, on our Friday session. He said, good afternoon, sir, and to all in the room. This is my last webinar for this year. I'm sorry you won't be with us uh, next week, Sam. Uh, nice gains in SPY, 20% in the last two days, another 15% today. Uh, nice week overall. That sounds fantastic. And um, you had mentioned a couple stocks earlier via email this week. I actually didn't have a chance to look into those yet. I was just going to pick up a few shares um, just to see what they did. But unfortunately, Sam, I didn't get to them. I'm sure they did well as so. Now, questions via email prior to the presentation. Uh, Paul sent us an email and says, please explain how to use your custom spread builder to analyze synthetic long stock trades. Buy a call and sell a put, same strike, same expiration. Uh, what is a good first trade in terms of expiration? And what are the best ways to manage and roll the positions? Um, there's an additional comment here that Paul made. He said, I was able to work with this for stocks. However, some ETFs such as EEM did not show me any options to view. Very quickly, let me comment on that before I show you my response and we go over to Power Options and look at a synthetic stock position and using the tools and some of the answers to these questions. About 20 ETFs in the past week or so, towards the end of the year, paid a special high dividend. EEM, I think IVV was one, IVM. Uh, there's about 20 or so ETFs that paid the special dividend. What happens when you pay this high of a dividend? Well, all of the options that exist have to have their strike prices changed, and a lot of times their contract size is altered as well. They're not standard options anymore that represent 100 shares per contract. They represent 100 shares and maybe some cash after the result of the special dividend. As a result, we don't track non-standard options in the Power Options suite of tools, unfortunately. So right now there's no options on EEM, IVV, or those other 18 or 20 or so ETFs that paid that special dividend at the end of the year. Once the contracts go back to the regular 100 contracts, um, I'm sorry, 100 shares per contract deliverable, they'll be back into the system. I don't have a timetable on that. I don't know how many of the existing options for EEM and the other ETFs were affected. and they're going to start to trickle out standard size options that mix in with those. We're going to make sure we only show the standard size options. That's why you're having a problem with EEM, Paul. Now, to my initial response to Paul's email, which I'm going to address today, but I wanted to make sure I covered this prior to the presentation. Uh, I don't trade synthetics personally, uh, so I really have no comment on Paul's uh, stronger two points. Um, good first trade in terms of expiration. Well, in order to create the synthetic, naturally you're doing that long call and that short put at the same time. You could do a reverse synthetic, or synthetic short, excuse me, in the opposite direction, uh, buy a put and sell a call. Uh, my advice is to not try to leg into the position as that could result in a worse position if your timing's wrong. I buy the call, maybe I'm expecting the stock to go up and I'm going to try to ladder a little bit and get a better premium for a higher strike put. Well, if the stock falls, now I'm sort of in a different structure very similar, but not what I wanted. So you want to enter those two both at the same time. Now, once you enter that synthetic position, you just have to decide why you're doing the synthetic in the first place. Are you doing it to mimic a covered call, a collar, a married put? Then you just enter the other legs as you normally would for that strategy. The expiration for the call and the put really depends on your goals for the position. We have to step back for a moment. Why am I using a synthetic? Well, maybe to take advantage of leverage. That's obvious. Still might have a margin requirement as well because of the uh, cash secured requirements of the naked put. The long call doesn't cover the naked put transaction, but if you add another put, sort of like a bull put spread with a long call, you have a very low margin requirement and some protection on the synthetic stock position. But you would have decided to do this because you were planning on buying the stock to begin with, but you wanted to use leverage. So why were you buying the stock? Was it because you think it's going to have a good run over the next three, four, or five months? Are you doing it because you just think it's a good 20 or 30 day trade? That would help you dictate the expiration cycle you'd select. Uh, if you're in it more for the long term, I'm going six to eight to 10 months out in time. If it's something I'm just using as part of a, a covered call-esque position where I'm only going to sell calls week by week for the next three or four weeks, 
I might only go two months out in time. It depends on what your goals are for the position. Paul also asked the best way to manage a role. Well, you're not just necessarily using it just to buy stock. In other words, you're not just creating the synthetic because you're planning on going for the long stock in that strategy. You're mimicking something, a covered call, a different structure, a leverage structure in that case. So the management with the extra options you would use on top of that long stock position to mimic that covered call, a collar, married put, or something along those lines, would be the same management techniques you would do in a standard married put, collar, or covered call position. I'm not really sure if you want to roll or adjust the legs of the synthetic individually, right, as you're using it to replace the staying in the stock. So let's say I bought a stock position because I thought it was going to be a strong stock over the next four months. If the stock moved up as I expected, gains 10, 12, 15 points, Am I going to sell the stock at market price, take the unrealized profits, and buy back into the stock position? No. That doesn't make any sense. What I'm going to do now is sell a call against those stocks to get a higher premium to help lower my cost basis further. I'm going to buy a put to try to trap the unrealized, I should say lock in, the unrealized gains I have on the position. So to me, I wouldn't think of rolling the two legs of the synthetic position you know, rolling them up or rolling them down necessarily, because to me that looks exactly like selling the stock that you have a profit on at market price and then buying right back into it. You, you want to hedge the gains that you have, lock them in, and not sell to close the position and move on. Okay, there's a little bit more on that um, in the sense that if I was planning, Paul, on a six to eight month trade, or maybe being in the position for four months, because I thought the stock was going to be strong over the next few months, and I bought the six to eight month out call and sold the same six to eight month out put. Well, at that point, when I reach within 60 days or so, 45 days to the expiration, if I held it that long, now I might consider rolling them out in time to give myself more time. Okay? Because I don't want that last bit of time value. I want it to decay on the put, but I don't really necessarily want it to decay on the call. But now, if you do it differently, you're talking about some kind of calendar hybrid. You'd want to move them together in that case to extend the position. Um, Sam comments in, is the best way is when to exit your position after it's in the money. Uh, you, he uses the 3MA and 8MA uh, as long as the underlying side, the underlying ride, the 3MA, let it run lower. Um, all right. Okay, so that, that's what he's referring to there. All right, but let me go ahead and pause the screen now. And we're going to navigate over to the Power Options suite of tools. And, of course, we're going to use that to illustrate our different examples, not only because it's Paul's question, but for all of the other questions that come in as well. Now, we're looking here just at a basic 14-day free trial to Power Options. And we don't have <clears throat> excuse me, a synthetic screener. I could use the covered call screener, then link to the profit and loss chart, and then build the synthetic instead of the stock. But let's just go into the custom spread tool. And let's say I was interested in purchasing shares of Apple. And Apple's currently trading at 279.44. But I don't want to put up necessarily $27,900 to buy 100 shares of Apple at this time. I'm slightly bullish on the stock. I think the market may or may not be strong for the next few months. This isn't direct advice. This is just musing. So if I was planning on buying Apple because I want to take advantage of it for a five or six month period, maybe cross an earnings or two earnings cycles, I'm likely going out to July, maybe even to September, 210 days out beyond that six month time frame, or maybe 273 days out in time. Now I want to synthetically mimic buying shares of stock. So what I'm probably going to do is stay right at the money. I'm going to buy that 280 call for around 1920 to 2055, somewhere in there, and we're going to sell the 280 put. This naturally gives me the synthetic stock position that Paul was referring to. All right, so that's leg one. Now, at the current moment, there we go. Sorry about that. 
we do get a cost here. We didn't get a credit in this case. A lot of times investors will try to look for a credit to get a little hedge right off the bat, meaning that that sell put premium is higher than the buy put price. If we went with the 279, we might see that. However, in this, it'd probably be more actually because the call would be in the money and the put would be out of the money. But here we have a debit of 5250. We've got our synthetic stock position. Why is my monetary requirement still $28,000? Well, that's again because this is still a naked put position. Owning the call does not cover the obligation of a naked put position. It still is giving me an obligation to potentially buy 100 shares of stock at this price if the stock is trading below that. How could I construct a trade to reduce this margin? Well, I might buy a near-term put sort of create a calendar put, maybe buy a 270 or 275 put near term so it's not as expensive, then I just have to cover the margin between the strike prices. Or I could go further out in time, equal to where we were, to the July expiration, and try to find something reasonable but cheap. And there's not much here, so we're going to use a 20 point spread. I'm going to go with a 260 here. I was looking for something under $10 in this case. Um, it's going to free up a lot of the margin, about half of the margin there, but we're going to buy this as well. And this is going to give me a synthetic protected position where I'm risking $3,000 instead of $28,000. That's really based on the difference in strike prices plus the net debit. That 20-point strike differences, I'd still have to put up the margin to cover that. It's a bull put spread. Selling the 280 put for July, buying the 260, that's a bull put. And then I've got an extra long call in the position. But the risk is 3183 the cost, the debit to get into the position, and the $2,000 difference in the strikes. If Apple falls below 260 then I'm in a structure where I'm losing on the bull put spread and lose all the cost of the long call. You could do it shorter term for cheaper, but then if you end up staying in this for three to four months, you're buying that put month by month by month, you're going to have a higher cost than this 1130 over that time period. Okay. All right. So that's kind of what we're looking at here in this situation. Now, let's take a mover and a shaker. Okay. What do I mean by that? I'm going to take a look at Shopify. And what I'm going to do is use the historical chain here a little bit. Oh, sorry, for Shopify. Now, earlier in a presentation a couple weeks ago, we showed getting into Shopify around 350, and uh, I think we bought a 360 or 380 put, 380 put, I believe, on it to synthesize a Mary put, and the stock was at 397 the other day. So it moved up fairly well from December 2nd to today, you know, 14, 15 days out in time. So let's go, I think, to December 3rd. It was after that first big move on Shopify. Yeah, there it is. A $20 move, it jumped up to $350. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to go out a few months. Let's go to April. So on December 3rd, I went out to April. Shopify just jumped up to $350. The $350 calls 4320 to 4510. All right, so let's call the midpoint roughly $44 to buy the Shopify call, uh, the $350 for April. And at the same time, our 350 put 4040 to 4210. Let's call that a midpoint of around 4110 or so. Okay. So, because I don't, why I'm going through this is because I, again, up front, I don't trade these. So I don't know if there's any advantage to rolling these options. In this case, just to me, it looks almost just like selling the stock if I bought the stock at 350 sold it today at 390 or the other day at 397 and then immediately bought back into the position let's see how that works we'll go back to a custom spread we'll use the Shopify position and okay great I said the April's 350 at the time Buy the call, sell the put. The put decayed in our favor, the call gained in our favor, we do have a profit. So, naturally we're going to buy here, 
and sell here. Did we get a credit? I didn't look. No. Oh. Now the call, I'm sorry, was 44. It was midpoint. And we were going to say about 41.10 for the put. There we go. So we have a debit here about three dollars, two ninety. Represents a synthetic stock position. We're around a profit of thirty-seven hundred dollars right now. In this one, we left the margin requirement. We didn't cover the other leg. Okay. Now the stock is up. What would happen? Okay. So my maximum risk, remember, is thirty-five thousand two ninety. The true risk, if it went to zero, which is unlikely, but that was thirty-five thousand two ninety. We had a $35,000 margin requirement. We had a 290 debit on this position. Now, hey, we've got a synthetic stock. It's moved up, but we're using options. I want to take advantage of that. I should be able to do better by closing out these legs, getting $20 of profit on the stock. I'm sorry. <laughs> $20 of profit on the call, roughly. Seeing the put decay $20 in my favor, so I have a gain of $40, but again, the stock's up $40. That makes perfect sense, doesn't it? So do I get an advantage by rolling up now to $390? let us see. We're going to close our options. We're going to replicate or uh, so that we're going to add them both back in. And I got to do the opposite transaction now on this field. So we're going to sell to close the call at current midpoint buy to close the put. What is that going to give us? Should give us a gain of 37.10. Roughly, okay, it's 39.75. Okay, so that's where we're straight line profit and loss chart. This is telling me I have a profit of $3,975. Now, the debit to get into this should not be $40. The debit to get into the new strikes should not be $40. What are my new strikes? We're going to stay in April. We're kind of rolling up here. And we're going to buy the 390, right, and sell the 390. So we're just moving the strikes up. Same thing. Okay, so we take in $40 of profit, which makes sense. It was the $40 movement on the stock. And we get in. Okay, so now we do have a credit of 37.25. Where were we before? We were at a profit of 39. So this is telling me our debit for this new position was a few hundred dollars. Now the monetary requirement jumps up to 39,000, but because of the profit we took in, it's declined a little bit, right? We're down to 35,275 is the maximum risk because we have the profit in there and still unrealized. The margin did go up. The requirement, because we're not using an extra put in this case, we're just showing it straightforward. The margin did go up. We've locked in the profit, but of course the monetary requirement went up as well, but the margin stays lower because we realized that profit. We realized most of that profit. This was just another debit of $300. Actually, it's only $250, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's only $250. So you've locked in a profit of $37.25. Now, if the stock pulls back to $380, we're giving a little bit back. That's probably okay. But on the other instance, if the stock pulled back at that time, and was trading at 360 or so, we probably have close to the same amount of profit. What did we really change? Not much. Okay. What might have been better in this situation, clear out all four legs, go back to our original position. What if now, I was lucky enough to have this happen, but instead of now rolling up that whole short stock, synthetic stock, I should say, combination, I just go here to say a 395 put. Yeah, it looks expensive. If I buy that now, okay, I've only locked in a profit of 1.1%. Of course, my cost is going to go up because I didn't have it to begin with. But if the stock starts to fall, we're still guaranteed a profit. And this one didn't look as good as I thought. These are still rather overpriced. Maybe it should have gone shorter term, especially if there were earnings coming up. But in any case, I'm just going to try that. Let's say earnings were coming up sometime between now and January expiration. Sorry for the scrolling. A lot of strikes here. And I did the $3.95 here for $20. Excuse me, folks. There we go. So this is like taking a profit on a stock. There we go. That's what I wanted. So use a shorter term in this case for a cheap price. Now you've locked in 
a lot of that profit where even if it does pull back to 375, 360, you're still at a profit of 2200 where it would have been only 1000 You still have the unlimited upside profit and the margin requirement is much lower at this point. Okay, so that's just to give you an example of should I roll the call and leave the naked put open? Um, we didn't really talk about that, but I don't know if there's much advantage in that either. You get $20 profit on the long call, but then you're going to spend another $40 up here, so it only costs you $20. It would be the same, perhaps, as moving and locking in some of the gains here with still holding that 350 strike call. That would be something you'd have to look into as well. Okay? All right. So I know there's not a lot of thoughts there. Sam offered some of his comments. Let me just make sure he didn't put in any others. Um, Sam didn't say the big trade was in uh, BA calls. Okay, so that wasn't related to this conversation. That's fine, but that was another big uh, position in there. And let's see here. Yeah, Sam does comment that, for my example, Apple is sort of dying off and the stock is in a sideways mode for the last three days, sure. Um, and just on this comment here, okay. Oh, this is, okay, David, I'm sorry, I missed it. I was trying to... Let's see if I can do this again here to get a better view of all of this. Fantastic. Hopefully this helps. Okay, so David's comment related to this. I shouldn't have gone off screen, but I did. Let's go back to Apple. Dave says, I try to start with a few contracts like three for the underlying. And if the stock truly trends up as I hope, I sell three contracts and replace with four. And I'm selling options against the four synthetic. Uh, in 2017... With Microsoft, I went from over 3 to 8 over a 12-month period. It's hard to go from 300 to 800 shares of stock. Okay, that's what I did when I rolled. Okay, so this is something that Ernie does as well, but not in the sense of the synthetic. What David's sort of talking about is starting with the long call and maybe part of the synthetic, starting with a few contracts and then moving them up, okay? And as you continue to add, he went from, you know, three to eight contracts, three to 800 shares without putting in all the money for that as well, okay, for the 800 shares of stock. Ernie does that with long calls. It's laddering is a common term. David's doing it in sort of the synthetic uh, view to get paid to roll the long calls. But what Ernie will sometimes do is, you know, buy five or ten contracts, and if the stock moves up as he expects, he might sell two and then buy three or four like you at the higher strike price, laddering up the position because stock is performing as you want, taking the cost, not just selling to close the close all the long calls you have and rolling them up, which is also okay, but doing them in segments and buying smaller increments on the way up, sort of laddering the position up as it continues to go. And David sounds like he's doing that as well, but he's doing it also with selling the puts there to pay for the premium and have the synthetic position. Now, David, um. And what I wasn't clear on from your statement as I read it is if you're doing the laddering up with the long calls and let's say you, you sell one or two and then you buy two or three at a higher strike, and you're sort of laddering up in this situation, are you also selling the same amount of puts at that time, you know, the two or three puts uh, to keep the synthetic going? Or do you look to do that at a different time? I'm just curious um, there as well.